After making an incredible discovery about the true structure of the Earth's core, an explorer has to deal with unknown dangers while protecting his nephew. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2008 movie, Journey to the Center of the Earth. An explorer called Max Anderson is frantically running away from a scary dinosaur. Suddenly, a crater opens up in the ground in front of him, and his only escape is to jump across, but he slips and falls into the fiery abyss. In reality, it was all just a nightmare for Trevor Anderson, a professor and researcher who, in the course of his work, discovers that the university will no longer fund his missing brother Max's studies. After returning home, the man receives an urgent call from his sister-in-law, informing him that she is on her way with her nephew Sean. However, he realizes that his house is in total disarray, leading him into a frantic race to organize everything before the visitors arrive. Elizabeth, the young man's mother, intends to leave him with Trevor for 10 days until she organizes his move to Canada. However, the young man is not at all thrilled with the idea of staying with his uncle, as he won't give up his video game for anything. Before leaving, the woman hands the professor a box that belonged to Max. Upon opening the package, the man comes across various trinkets, such as a baseball glove and a yo-yo, which he mishandles, destroying one of his trophies. Trevor also finds his brother's favorite book, Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth. After consulting the book, he is surprised by several notes on the temperature of magma, specifically in the same regions where he is researching. At the same moment, the man goes to the laboratory, where Sean notices that there is an extra dot on the computer screen, located in Iceland. The professor then suggests that, before he disappeared, Max was investigating this location, where everyone suspected the existence of volcanic passages to the center of the Earth. After returning home, Trevor admits that he intends to follow his brother's trail and take Sean to his mother, but the young man insists on going along because Max was his father. During the trip, the professor tries to decipher the notes in the book, which the young man suggests are the name of a person. After a brief search, the young man discovers that the name was that of the executive director of the Institute of Progressive Volcanology. After disembarking from the plane, the men drive a long way to the institute's address. However, when they arrive at a remote and isolated location, they are surprised by a simple hut, which contradicts their expectations of the institution. When they knock on the door, they are met by a beautiful girl called Hannah. She reveals that she is the daughter of the late director of the institute, leaving them perplexed by this information. The woman then confesses that her father was a Vernian, which means that he sympathized with Jules Verne's theories. In addition, Max also believed in the same ideas as the author. Afterwards, Hannah warns them that there is no safe route to the volcano, but offers to guide them in exchange for a generous sum of money, as she is an experienced mountain guide. During the walk, Sean admits to his uncle that he is interested in the girl. However, to his surprise, Trevor reveals that he is also interested in her. According to Hannah, Sneffels Mountain, which they are climbing, is dangerous and treacherous. In addition, Verne's book indicates that the place is where the passage to the center of the earth is located. The professor then comes across the sensor used in the research. However, a storm suddenly breaks out, causing Sean and the girl to seek shelter. As Trevor retrieves the device from the ground, lightning begins to strike the area around him. Determined, he manages to retrieve the equipment and runs towards the shelter, with the lightning falling around him, attracted by the sensor. Soon afterwards, the man throws the device backwards, which is hit by one of the bolts of lightning. He then jumps into the cave and an explosion causes the entrance to collapse. Inside, the three explorers realize that they are trapped because the passage has been blocked by tons of stones. After that, the group needs to find a way out, and they are faced with two paths, only one of which can lead them back to the surface. During the journey, the professor doesn't realize that there is a cliff in front of him. Before he falls, Hannah acts quickly and saves him. At the edge of the chasm, there is a sign that reads, stay away. Despite this, Trevor decides to investigate and lights a flare to gauge the depth of the precipice. However, a sudden explosion occurs due to the presence of magnesium in the cave walls, a highly flammable substance. Faced with this problem, Hannah delivers a type of fireproof flare, and by counting the time it takes for the object to hit the ground, they discover that the chasm is about 60 meters deep. Soon after, they decide to abseil down to the lower level, which makes Sean apprehensive and afraid. Trevor is the first to descend into the sinister place, followed by his nephew, who is supported by the girl. Along the way, the man becomes fascinated by a special kind of stone, which distracts him and prevents him from holding on to his rope, which comes loose. Assessing the situation, Hannah admits that they should cut the cable that holds the professor up, so that the incident doesn't take them all down at once. Trevor quickly despairs at the thought, but the woman cuts the rope, sending him plummeting. However, she knew he was very close to the ground before she let him fall. When they all reach firm ground, 
they find a dangerous old mine, where dozens of people lost their lives in a disaster long ago. Further on, the group comes across the site's generator. Despite Trevor's warnings of danger, the woman activates the device, causing the lights to come on. Soon after, Sean reveals his belief that the mine could be the way out for them, but the girl confesses that only one miner has managed to escape alive. Then they all get into one of the mining carts, and Hannah accelerates the vehicle, which reaches an uncontrolled speed due to the imminent curves and descents. In addition, they have to dodge the various pieces of debris that come in their way. Along the way, they come across a damaged part of the track, but the trolleys easily jump over it. After that, the route forks and each vehicle goes in a different direction. On her way, Hannah notices that the tracks end at a precipice. Faced with this situation, she acts quickly by jumping into the professor's trolley. However, the two adults didn't anticipate that Trevor's path would also come to an end. So the girl improvises a solution by tying a rope around them and attaching one end to the rails. This way, they are stuck to the ground while the cart crashes into the stone wall and explodes. At the same moment, Sean appears quietly in his vehicle. He then investigates one of the passages, which leads to a place full of precious stones such as rubies and diamonds. These crystals are usually formed in volcanic tubes, which can access the surface. While the young man is preoccupied with acquiring as many stones as possible, a slight tremor catches the group's attention. On checking the soil, Hannah discovers that it is made of muscovite, a very fine type of rock formation that can give way easily. Then everyone starts walking towards the exit very slowly and cautiously, but Sean's diamond falls out of his bag, causing a hole in the rock, but nothing happens. Just as they breathe a sigh of relief, the ground suddenly gives way, causing everything to collapse. During the fall, Trevor reveals that one of Vern's theories is that this type of volcanic tunnel possibly slows down falling objects. Suddenly, a waterfall appears like a slide and they lose speed, falling into a cave. Through an underwater passage, the group dives until they find the exit. As they leave the water, the two guys realize that Hannah is still diving. Trevor quickly looks for the girl, who can't swim due to the weight of her bag, and needs the man's help to get out. Afterwards, they rest and observe that on the ceiling of the cave there are bright spots, which resemble stars. However, the lights begin to move, revealing a type of bioluminescent bird. As they observe the creatures, Trevor confesses that they have been extinct for thousands of years. One of the birds approaches Sean and then the rest of the group follows the birds into a passageway, where they discover a vast world inside, full of lakes and mountains. The man is immensely happy, as Max's theories have been proven correct. In the sky, they see a giant fireball similar to the sun, and Trevor says that in the book there is a detailed description of this world within another world. During their exploration, they come across waterfalls, incredible plants and huge fossilized mushrooms. At the same time, the professor compares his findings with the content of the book, which is extremely in line with what is in front of him. Then Sean makes a discovery and, when everyone goes to check it out, they find a kind of treehouse. Trevor decides to investigate inside, while the girl continues to search the ground. Upon entering, the man realizes that everything inside seems to be from the last century, possibly belonging to the book's protagonist. At the same time, Hannah comes across some exploration equipment and a bottle bearing the name of the missing explorer. She also finds a lantern lying near a cliff. While rummaging through the books in the treehouse, the men discover that the place used to be Max's shelter, and in his notes he indicated the presence of an underground ocean nearby. Afterwards, Hannah shows them the whereabouts of the missing man, and the three of them prepare a proper burial for the father Sean never knew. During the impromptu funeral, everyone is moved by the messages in the diary that Max wrote for his son. In his notebook, the explorer explains that the site is surrounded by magma, and during periods of intense seismic activity, it turns into a giant furnace. After listening to the adults' conversation, Sean shows an interest in finding out what happened to his father. They explain that the place gets hotter and hotter, reaching temperatures of around 194 degrees, but a human being can only withstand up to 134 degrees. That's why the group intends to follow Max's plan, which is to cross the ocean until they reach a river that has a thermal spring capable of taking them to the surface. However, they must do this before the heat rises and the water evaporates. Quickly, using the instructions in the notebook, a caravel is built. Meanwhile, the temperature rises ever higher, reaching 105 degrees. After finishing the last details, Trevor hands Sean a compass that belonged to Max, but he has to use it with caution, because in the center of the earth the polarity is reversed. The explorers then raise the sail, taking advantage of the wind to gain momentum. At this point, the professor is almost left behind, but manages to jump into the boat in time. During the trip, one of the birds appears to warn Sean about something, when they come across a rapidly approaching storm. Soon after, the girl warns them that they'd better lower the sail, 
but they're running out of time, as the temperature has already reached 109 degrees. Then the young man notices some kind of large fish in the sea. Suddenly, one of the animals jumps out of the water and lunges at the young man and then at Hannah, who deftly dodges it. After that, one of the creatures with huge teeth charges towards Trevor, who holds it firmly, and with a kick throws it into the water. Soon, hundreds of giant piranhas appear and advance against the group, who use makeshift baseball bats to knock the animals down. During the battle, Sean receives a call from his mother, who asks where he is. Suddenly, one of the fish gets stuck on top of the boat and is about to bite Hannah. However, Trevor manages to defeat the animal. Before he can say goodbye to Elizabeth, the young man has his phone eaten by one of the monsters. Soon after, the professor signals to Sean that one of the monsters is about to attack him. The young man prepares himself, but the beast that jumps out of the water is a huge creature that easily devours the piranhas. Realizing that the giant animals are only paying attention to the fish, and with the appearance of hundreds of them making navigation more challenging, the group decides to change the route to avoid unwanted confrontations. During the voyage, the wind is so strong that it causes Hannah to drop the sails. What's more, the rope causes horrible injuries to her hands. Quickly, the young man rushes forward to grab the ropes. However, before he can heed Trevor's warning, the force of the gale breaks the sail's attachment, causing the young man to be carried away in the storm. When he wakes up, Sean finds a terrifying piranha lying next to him. At that moment, he realizes that he is alone on an isolated beach. Looking into an opening in the rocks, the young man meets his bird friend, who shows him the way to drinking water. Meanwhile, the two adults are walking on dry land, calling for Sean. They believe that the young man will be smart enough to find the river on his own. During his walk, the young man finally finds water to quench his thirst. Afterwards, he thanks the bird and continues to follow it through the strange world. While resting, Trevor comes across a carnivorous plant with razor-sharp teeth trying to bite into the girl. He quickly lands a clean blow on the beast, which he observes closely after the knockout. Looking back, the man realizes that Hannah has disappeared while he was distracted. He then finds the woman tied up by several vines controlled by carnivorous plants, which appear in pairs around him. When he tries to attack the creature, Trevor has his spear immobilized, forcing him to throw punches, which causes a disgusting goo from the monster's mouth to stick to his hand. After that, the professor continues to fight several monsters at the same time, and Hannah is increasingly suffocated by the vines. Skillfully, the man pulls the plant out by the roots, freeing his friend from her bonds. However, before the couple can follow the trail, one of the creatures rises up behind Trevor, but he knocks it out with ease. Meanwhile, Sean moves towards a light at the end of the cave, where he stumbles. When he gets up, he notices that his pocket knife is mysteriously floating, indicating that the place is a magnetic field. Soon afterwards, the young man runs over the rock formation in front of him, until one of the rocks shifts easily, revealing an abyss beneath it. He realizes that the rocks are magnetic and float on their own. Sean then prepares to follow a trail of floating rocks, jumping from one to the next while balancing himself. However, along the way, he suddenly loses balance and falls onto the rock. Now the young man is struggling to balance himself and keep the stones close together. However, when he takes a false step, they start to move further and further away from him, making him very far from the next stop. Faced with this situation, Sean makes a leap that propels him forward. However, the impulse is too strong and causes the rock to spin around on itself, so the young man tries hard not to fall as he faces the abyss. At the same moment, one of his items falls out of his pocket, scaring him even more. He then feels relieved when he returns to the top of the rock. However, it makes the dangerous move again, but he holds on until it returns to the surface. Meanwhile, Trevor and Hannah spot the river that leads to the path of the hot spring. However, they need to find the young man before they leave, so they shout for the young man, but get no answers. On the other hand, Sean continues to follow his compass, and the temperature rises more and more, making him sweat from the heat. During his walk, the young man realizes that he is walking on giant animal skulls. Suddenly, he hears a terrifying noise and quickly hides. Meanwhile, Trevor asks Hannah to continue on the trail, as he intends to return to look for his nephew. She kisses him goodbye, fearing that they may never see each other again. At the same time, Sean is surprised by a disgusting liquid that falls to the ground in front of him. When he looks up, he is startled by a dinosaur salivating to devour him. At that moment, the monster tries to grab the young man, who deftly dodges it by rolling on the ground, then he runs wildly with the insane predator right on his tail. During the escape, the dinosaur destroys everything in its path, getting closer and closer to Sean. Finally, the young man finds shelter in a cave, but the creature smashes through the wall with its sharp teeth. Meanwhile, Trevor hears his nephew's desperate cries. 
At that moment, he realizes that the sound is coming from the other side of the wall he's on, and tries to break through it anyway. Just as Sean is about to be devoured, the professor manages to destroy the wall and save the young man. Before the men can catch their breath, they are surprised by the creature, which scrambles across the rocks with ease, causing them to run wildly. Determined to perform one last act of courage, Trevor leads the dinosaur towards an area with incredibly fragile rocks, risking falling in with the predator. Faced with this, the professor runs away while the ground begins to give way more and more, causing the monster to plummet down the precipice that appears on the spot. Searching for his uncle, Sean goes to the edge of the chasm and comes across the man holding on tightly to the rocks. Soon after, they walk through a tunnel that leads to the river, but the water is boiling due to the temperature of the place, which continues to rise. Fortunately, Hannah appears rowing a boat made from the skull of a dinosaur. A little later, they notice that the boat's speed is gradually increasing, and the water is running out, indicating that the group is on the riverbed. The explorers come across an immense crater, into which they fall and become trapped before being swallowed up by the boiling magma below. Then the group realizes that, for the hot spring to work, the water needs to come together with the lava. However, the water hasn't passed through the place for a few hours. While carefully examining the site, Trevor notices traces of water running down the wall, but the rocks block his passage. Faced with this situation, the professor has an ingenious idea. Use the flares to react with the magnesium present in the environment. This reaction will cause controlled explosions capable of creating cracks in the rocks and releasing the trapped liquid. To put his plan into practice, Trevor uses two flares, but neither explodes. With the last flare in hand, the man decides to descend into the abyss, to the place where the wall is driest. While Hannah handles the rope on which the professor is tied, he holds the object and finds a rock with more magnesium, but there is still a lot of moisture. He is then forced to throw the flare from the other side of the tunnel, which is drier. When he throws the object, he hits the target, but nothing happens. However, a small spark ignites, triggering a sequence of explosions. The rocks give way in the face of the detonation, releasing water, which comes into contact with the boiling magma, resulting in the formation of a gigantic thermal eruption. The force of the jet propels the boat upwards and, as it leaves the outside, it continues to rise. After that, it plummets at an absurd speed and the fall is cushioned by a plantation, destroying all the fruit in front of it. At the end of the journey, the boat is stopped when it collides with the home of an Italian man, who is furious at the destruction of his vegetable garden. At that moment, Sean takes one of the diamonds out of his bag and hands it to the man, who asks if they want to slip through the plantation again. At work, the professor is confronted by Alan, who notices the happiness on his face. Trevor retorts by saying that he was very lucky at the weekend, falling into a real fortune. Hannah and the professor then say goodbye to the young man, inviting him to spend the Christmas vacations. Soon after, the young man receives a book from his uncle about the lost city of Atlantis. Before leaving, Sean feeds his pet that is inside the bag, at which point they all come across the bioluminescent bird that was in the center of the earth. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.